What's going on YouTube? Uh, today I'm just doing a little deck profile of uh, Magical Musketeers. I wish they were called Magic, uh, I think or Magic Bullets was the Japanese name for the archetype, but you know, Konami. So yeah, this is one of my favorite decks because I've always liked control uh, style decks and this one's like really heavily control uh, style and it like re recurs its resources. Uh, it's got really good resource management in it and it's just a really fun deck. The only like I've always tried to do uh, replays for uh, YGO Pro, but uh, the deck's so controlling and grindy. Like people usually quit halfway in the game because they get bored, I guess. But it's fun for me. So yeah, I figured I'd just go ahead and do a real life deck profile for it, um, since I couldn't really do replays. I, like I can never get enough gameplay footage of the uh, full games. So yeah. All right, so we'll just get uh, right into it. So um, playing two of the number or the. Right, uh, geez, level four, I'm sorry. It's Magical Musketeer Starfire. And um, so each, if you don't know, each of the Magical Muskets, um, if you activate a Spell or Trap card in that column, so she's here, right here, um, it activates its effect. So she can uh, special summon one Magical Musketeer uh, monster level four or lower from your deck into defense position onto the field. Um, my favorite, uh, Magical Musketeer Caspar. Uh, he always reminds me of Vash from Trigun. I uh, always thought he looked really badass. Um, he's my favorite because when you activate a, a spell or trap card in his zone, you get to search for any Magic of Musketeer uh, card from your deck. So it's really good for if you need something specific, you know, it's a really nice card. Uh, he's 2,000 defense, so uh, I don't know. He's kind of weak, 1,200 attack, but you know, you have different cards to manipulate monsters in this deck, and uh, yeah, there's. Some stuff in the extra deck you don't go into too often, but we'll get to it. Uh, we have Magical Musketeer Kid Brave. Uh, sorry for the glare. Let me put this stuff over and down a bit. Um, pretty much when he act, when you uh, either player activates a Spell or Trap card in his own, you could uh, you could discard one uh, Magical Musketeer uh, yeah card, and then you draw two cards. Um, so it helps you pitch some of your maybe you used a spell trap because each of the spell traps you can only use once per turn so maybe if you used one already you can ditch that one um to draw two fresh cards potentially a hand trap or whatever so he's really nice and then the last level three is magical musketeer doc um and when one activated his um his column you get to add a magical musketeer from your graveyard back to your hand so that's it for the magical musketeer lineup um, it's not like a, a big lineup of them, but you, like I said, you can recur them or whatever from your graveyard, your deck, special summon them from the deck. It's really nice. Um, next, we have a couple of hand traps. So we have Ghost Ogre, Snow Rabbit. Um, I know it's a pretty solid uh, hand trap in the most formats, I think. Um, really good against uh, things like Sky Striker and whatnot. It's just an all around good um, hand trap. Uh, also, Ash Blossom and Joy Springs. It's a really solid hand trap. I, I, Feel like she's never going to be irrelevant in any format so yeah that's it for the uh, monster lineup there's two hand traps there all right next for spells we have a magical musket uh steady hands excuse me so this pretty much just doubles the attack and defense of uh one of your magical musketeers uh on your side of the field uh and, but it cannot th uh, attack directly that turn um, and each of the Magical Musket cards you can only use um, once per turn or whatever. So we do run three of a lot of them, uh, but uh, you know you want to see them. So they're really good for the most part. Uh, and next we have a Magical Musket Cross Domination. Uh, this pretty much makes one of your opponent's monsters uh, zero attack and defense, and then negates their effects or whatever. So it's really it's really good. Uh, my favorite spell in the deck, honestly. So. Uh, next we have some non-magical musket cards. We have Regeki, um, two Twin Twisters, deal with back row, uh, Upstart Goblin. Um, I, I like this because it just pluses uh, in the stack or whatever. I mean, it's a one-for-one one in its own, but when you use it on a magical musket um, column, then you just getting it, their effect for free pretty much. I mean, your opponent gains a little bit of life points, but you'll eventually chip away. Uh, and then we have two Pot of Desires. We do run three of a lot of the cards, so I mean, it's not that bad. Plus, you, the deck's so good at like fe uh, fetching what you need in it, so you can see what uh, what you want to see really quickly in the deck. And then, you know, Pot of Desires doesn't hurt very much. Um, Pot of Duality. 
I love this card a lot in this deck, but um, a lot of times it conflicts with uh, my next cards, Ties of the Brethren, because uh, obviously you can't special summon um, if the turn you use this or whatever. So yeah, if you have both of these in your hand, it can be a little awkward sometimes, but you just gotta see what's best in that situation. Uh, a lot of times you wanna probably Ties of the Brethren, but if it's like, you know, a little deeper into the game, um, you'll probably pot it as duality over it. So that's it for the spell lineup. And if you guys don't know what Ties of the Brethren does, it special summons two monsters of the same attribute and level um, that you have on the field. So, yeah, it's really good o opening, like, especially if you're going first, play that and you get all three of your level threes out or whatever, and it's really hard for your opponent to, uh, to deal with your stuff, so. Next for our trap lineup, we run uh, two Solemn Scoldings. Uh, so if it's your only spell or trap card set, uh, when a monster would be summoned, a spell or trap card or a monster effects activated, you play, pay 3k and then you negate it and destroy it. And so it's really good because you don't, you very rarely set in this deck. Like we, ha uh, I play one twin twister. A lot of times you're activating that from your hand anyways. But um, yeah, that's the only thing really that conflicts because you hardly set anything in this deck um, unless you're trying to bluff or something. So next we have a magical musket fiendish deal. Um, this pretty much stops your magical musket guys from being destroyed. Uh, I think it's just by effect, yeah. And then if this goes to the graveyard by your opponent's uh, effects, you could add a magical musket from a uh, card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So it's really nice. Um, so this is another card you could potentially set if you don't have a solemn scolding out or whatever and bait it, and uh, your opponent could potentially pop it. Um, online, I see a lot of people. Like if I have maybe these two set or whatever, they'll pop both. Or even if this is activated or whatever, if I have another back row or whatever, they'll pop it with twin twisters because they don't know what the hell it does. And then, you know, you just get a free plus, whatever. So it's really nice. Um, probably the second best trap, um, Magical Musket Desperado, just destroys one face up card on the field. Um, pretty self-explanatory, it's a really solid card. And then uh, my favorite trap, Magical Musket, uh, Last Stand. It's a counter trap, and um, it just counters a spell or trap card that your opponent plays. Uh, really good card, really good card. Also, um, if you guys don't know, uh, sorry for not stating it earlier, all the Magical Musket uh, monsters let you cast from your hand. The Magical Musket, um, mas Magical Musket to your spells and traps you can cast from your hand or whatever, so. It's really nice. Uh, it's really good against like anti-spell and stuff because you could just use your trap straight from your hand. Uh, next, we're going to the extra deck. We, you rarely ever actually make anything uh, in this. There's like, these are all just for like super situational, um, like scenarios or whatever. Because the magical muskets are pretty much better than most cards in here, but there are things to deal with the problematic cards. So we have a super quantum mech beast gram pulse. Uh, it pretty much just pops us a back row. Um, we have. Levier the Sea Dragon. It just lets you special summon a banished level four lower monster. Uh, we have Constellar Hyades. I always mess up his name. Uh, just put all your uh, opponent's monsters they control in a face-up defense position. I've never actually made this or whatever. I just kind of put things in here just in case they come up. I mean, if, if your opponent has something with high attack and low defense, you know, like that could come in handy. Um, King Darius pretty much stops itself from being destroyed and uh, in, in combat, and then your opponent's monster that battled it gets destroyed, and then they take damage from it. Uh, Alec or Ghost Trick Alucard, you detach material from it, and you target one sec uh, card your opponent controls and destroy it. And then we have Grinosaurus. Uh, if it destroys the opponent's monster, you can detach one, and then they do a thousand damage to your opponent. Um, Nightmare Shark lets you attack directly, so it's 2k. This deck doesn't deal a lot of damage, um, you know, like very fast, so you just chip away, chip away, and then if you get him within a 2k range, it's not a bad idea to summon this and try to uh, kill him for good. Uh, number 30, Acid Golem of uh, Destruction. Uh, it's pretty much just a big beat stick. This is, mm, I, yeah, the biggest monster you could pretty much go into in this deck, uh, 3000. It just has an effect where you have to either detach a material from it or take 2,000, and if it doesn't have any materials, it can't attack. Um, my favorite XYZ in this um, deck, and the one I go to the most often, the number 75 Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. Uh, it's pretty new, and 
it just pretty much turns one of your opponent's um, card effects or monster effects into both players draw one card or whatever. So it's really nice. Uh, we have Riverian Shark. Um, this brings back a number monster from the graveyard and, uh, and adds a material that you detach from it to it. So, I mean, a lot of times I'll go back into Bamboozling because, it's, like I said, it's my favorite and probably the best one in the uh, extra deck. And you know, we have two Phantom Knights, Break Swords. This is another one we probably make the most often. It just deals with pro problematic cards that you can't run over. Just pop one card you control and then one card your opponent controls. Um, number 49, Fortune Tune. I've never went into this card. But if it's going to be destroyed, you could detach one uh, from it instead. It's just kind of like a Staller card. And uh, I forget what it does another effect. Oh yeah, if it's sent from the field of the graveyard, you target two level 3 monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them, and then return this back to the extra deck. So uh, it could put some of your uh, Magic Bullet or Magical Musketeers back into the deck. We have another Staller card, I guess. Uh, if it would be destroyed, you can detach one monster from the, or one XC and then uh, not, let it not be destroyed. Um, and then we have uh, Crystal, how the hell do you even say this? Chrom Anomaly, Crystal, Chrononaut. So uh, if it's if this card is targeted for an attack, you can detach a material from this card. This turn, it cannot be destroyed, and then your opponent takes the battle damage from it. So. Several of these I've never actually gone into. They're more just here in case, like I said, the situation arises where you actually need them. So, and then my little uh, Yugi tokens. But this deck is a lot of fun. Um, it also just got a Link Monster kind of in the OCG. I don't know what it does yet. I just know it goes. It's pretty much like one monster, one Magic Bullet monster goes into it, and then um, I think you get special summon from the deck. But it, from what I remember, it was a really good. Um, Link Monster, but the deck is already really fun before you even get that support, and I think it's a really good deck actually. So, if you like control decks, I would highly suggest this deck uh, for you. And I don't know if the the prices of these cards have went up since the support got announced or not, but it is a lot of fun. So if you do like control, I highly suggest picking this deck up. It's uh, probably my favorite control deck to play. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little deck profile. Try to explain everything as best as I can. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you like it and uh, yeah subscribe for my channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content in the future Thanks a lot for watching and you guys take care. Bye